Are you in favour of the proposal to continue the regeneration of South Dublin? Yes or no? In the event of a majority no vote, this is what I'm saying, I'm suggesting you should very strongly go for, work on the buildings that is already underway will continue. However, the council will have to reconsider if the rest of the programme is affordable. This might mean that we cannot build the plan that the council wants. You will be offered in October a very similar question from the same council with the same people behind it. Do you want to demolish and redevelop your estate? They will not be giving you the informed option. They will have already made the decision, as they said in that plan that I showed you, that it's going forward with it. Um, if we go forward with it, the effect we've got to be demolished and rebuilt on a phased basis. So, the way I'm going to go into this is I really would like to get everyone to talk about this. Talk about this. Um, these are the kind of offers they're making to tenants and leaseholders. Um, do you want to come up and maybe have a talk now and talk about what's actually happened here? Because these are people, these are people who are several years down the process. It's important that you hear what their actual experience is, not what you'll be promised by people who've been paid to give you this information. Okay. So I'm chair of one of the tenants associations on South Dublin. We're still council blocks. There's very few council blocks left. In case you don't know South Kilburn, it's very different in states than Rath. So we've got virtually no houses or masonettes. It's virtually all uh, blocks of flats. We have been being regenerated already for 15 years. We have another 15 years to go. Think about that. We've been living in a building site for 15 years and we have another 15 years to go. We were told right at the start, the first master plan as they call it, there will be no more tower blocks in South Kilburn. Anybody who's been to South Kilburn in the last few years will know they're still building tower blocks. Those are the sorts of promises we were made that get forgotten. The master plan changes all along the line, and you never quite keep up. Amongst the first blocks to be demolished, surprise, surprise, were those nearest to the transport links. There's the tube station, nearest to the Kilburn High Road to go into town and so on. And those were blocks that the residents had argued were architecturally sound, did not need to be demolished. They were the first to go. Blocks which do need demolishing, because they're bison blocks and they need to go, are still there. So the priority is not our standard of living, it's what the developers want. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've continually seen in that period is that that's a priority. Now, it's not quite accurate what was up there earlier. What the council have said from the start in South Kilburn is they will replace an equal number of units of social housing to what was there before. But it'd be housing associations, not council, so that's gone. And what happens with those rents and the service charges, as was said, they start off very similar to council rents when you transfer. The housing association rents are going up much quicker than the council rents, the service charges get astronomical. So what happens is that people move into those new homes to then find that their costs are considerably more than they were before, and then a lot of them end up moving out of London. The other thing, of course, is that they're not building a single extra unit of social housing from what there was before, but they are building as many homes for sale as well. So they're doubling the density, but what the extra they're building is actually those 800,000 pound flats that we saw. And by the way, I mean, apart from the mistake that the estate agents are making, say, those people who want to shop in Waitrose, Kilburn hasn't got Waitrose. We've <laughs> um, only got Mark Suspenses. But um, amongst the things in, in there is that those people in those private homes can buy a car parking space underground for £45,000. That's a car parking space. Um, and that's the continual, one of the continual issues, is that they are not addressing the housing crisis at all. According to the council's own figures, 40% of the households in Brent cannot even afford social rents. And yet what's being built is what you saw. It costs 800,000 pounds, a million pounds, and so on. The additional thing 
continually is that the new housing, and this is not just the social housing, the private housing as well, is of poor quality. Now, Simon showed you uh, Alan Q and, and some layers, there's worse. So, George House, for anybody who knows it, soon after the Grenfell fire, it discovered that had flammable value. Ever since, it has had 24 hour firewall. It now, for over a year, has had scaffold on it. They've only just started to remove that packing. That scaffold is so dense, if you're on the ground floor, you've got no light. That same block had to have a new roof because it leaked. Within five years of being built, <coughs> Merle Court has flammable cladding, but now the, the Housing Association owns it have said they've also got so much internal work to do that they're telling all the tenants they have to get out. They have to get out completely. There are other blocks where there's heating problems or water problems, condensation problems, and so on and so forth. Actually, you probably find very few of the new built blocks in South Kilburn that haven't got major problems. But the council always tells us, oh, that's bedding in issues. Well, I'm not sure how a new roof is a bedding in issue, but there you go. So there's that problem. And then, of course, they had the ballot recently. Now, ignoring all the cost, the million pounds in run up to the ballot, we asked after the ballot how much the council spent just on winning the ballot, the point of you know, leaflets, house visits, and so on. And what they did to win that ballot was quite amazing. They had a whole load of council staff going around visiting residents, persuading them that uh, what they wanted is a new home. Well, who doesn't say no to, to a new home? but house visits twice or more often that the chief executive of the council was present at the consultation meetings how much that cost god knows the council they said well they couldn't estimate how much they spent on staff costs in winning the ballot but they spent fifty-five thousand pounds on the actual ballot itself not not you know the stuff beforehand the consultants and so on on leaflets on consultation meetings and so on. But of course, if you're running around trying to persuade people to vote no, you're lucky to scrape together 200 quid, let alone 55,000 pounds, to, to actually go around and, and talk to people about it. What they don't say when they give you that ballot, do you want regeneration or no, what they didn't tell anybody was what the other things were they were going to build, the 800,000 pounds, that they didn't get mentioned. You're only asked yes or no to regeneration. From with the ballot in South Kilk, it was the first major ballot since Sonny Khan said that they ballot. They balloted over the demolition of 17 blocks. Now the problem with that, several things. Firstly, there were several blocks in there where the residents were convinced that their blocks only needed regeneration. There were some blocks where people said our blocks thought that it needs to work demolition. But then you're pitching mm. residents against each other. You've got those who say mm. we only want refurbishment, then you've got those who say our blocks are dreadful, they should come down. First problem. Second problem is of course the you know the disparity in how much is spent by the council and how much any residents who wants to say no can spend. And the third thing was they said to temporary residents and temporary is people who've been living in temporary housing for up to 10 years, it's not people who've been in there for two weeks. They said to the temporary residents, you will only get rehoused if there's a yes vote in the ballot. Which of course immediately is blackmail. So those people obviously, and who can blame them, all voted yes in the ballot. So that's the problems with the ballot. And then of course down the line people find actually the service charges are going up, the rent's going up, and they've got problems with their hot water, their heating and everything else. People are persuaded by to get a new flat and then find out the problem. And don't believe everything they say about the new flats being bigger. Some of the new flats in South Kilburn are smaller than what people had before. So those are the realities. It's not scaremongering. That is the reality of what Brent Council has been doing to South Kilburn for the last 15 years and for the next 15 years.